You've probably gotten the question before of if you could have any superpower, what would it be? And I feel like most often I hear people answer to be able to fly or telepathy. But for me, without question, it would be teleportation. If I could hop over to Italy a couple times a week for a good meal, it would make my dreams come true. I have a deep love of Italy and the Italian approach to food. I know that it varies pretty significantly region to region, but I feel like a common thread is a simple but elegant approach to food that celebrates ingredients and really focuses on community. My mom and I were there over a decade ago on a girl's trip, and we stayed at this sweet little inn that did cooking classes to teach you fundamental Italian recipes that were true to the region we were staying in, like veal scallopini and panna cotta. And I really fell in love with the concept of panna cotta. So technically translated, panna cotta is cooked cream, but I like to think of it as basically milk jello because it's essentially milk, a sugar and gelatin that are heated up and then set in the refrigerator to create a really sweetened milk jello of sorts. Super simplified to call it that, but that's basically what it is. So today I'm making a lemon panna cotta and I'm making it dairy free by using canned coconut milk. You don't have to use that, but I personally, whether you can have dairy or not, would recommend trying this with canned coconut milk. Usually panna cotta is made with a homogenized milk so that it doesn't separate and creates one consistent color of panna cotta throughout the dessert. But the reason I like to use canned coconut milk is because it's not homogenized. So although I'm going to mix and heat all the ingredients together, once I go to set the panna cotta in the fridge, it's gonna naturally separate and create two layers. The first being a thin kind of yellow lemon gelatin type layer on the top. And the second is the thicker coconut milk portion on the bottom that has that lemon flavor woven throughout. I'm gonna make mine in two bowls that I really like the shape of because when they're inverted and the panna cotta is served on a plate, it's a really beautiful shape. So I'm gonna use these today, but you don't have to do that. If you don't wanna mess with inverting the panna cotta, you can simply set them in ramekins and serve them with a spoon and garnish on top and call it a day. So I'm gonna show you how to make this and I will show you a technique to invert the panna cotta. I like to serve it with some fresh herbs just to make it a little bit more interesting and so that you can tell what it is and that it's something that you want to eat once it's on the plate. You'll see what I mean once I invert it. And um, I hope that you guys will enjoy it. So first I have a medium sized bowl that I'm going to pour my canned coconut milk into. And because it naturally separates in the can, I'm gonna use a spatula to get out all the good fatty bits and then a whisk to whisk it all together really well. And then once it's all thoroughly combined, I am going to pour that into a separate measuring cup. And it should give me right around one and a half cups of coconut milk. Then using the same bowl, I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of gelatin powder and a quarter cup of the coconut milk. If you prefer vegan, you can use agar agar instead of gelatin. I'm gonna whisk that all together and set it aside so the gelatin can bloom and add my remaining ingredients in a saucepan set over medium high heat. So I've put in the remaining one and a quarter cups of coconut milk, a quarter cup of maple syrup, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a quarter teaspoon of fine sea salt. And I'm gonna whisk that occasionally until the mixture becomes nice and foamy and um, comes to a good simmer. And once it does, I'm going to immediately turn off the heat, but I am gonna leave the saucepan on the heat and then I'm gonna add in my lemon flavoring. So I'm using the zest of two lemons to really increase that flavor and the juice from those two lemons as well. And once those are all in, I'm gonna whisk it and then pour the whole mixture through a fine mesh sieve into that bowl of bloom gelatin. And that's gonna catch the zest for me, but it still will have gotten the flavor. I whisked that all together and I have two ramekins here. I would say you could use two large or four small ramekins. I've greased them nicely 
because I'm planning on inverting these panna cotta and I'm evenly dividing the milk mixture between the two of them. And then I'm going to place those in the refrigerator to set for about three hours. You can see when my finger presses it, it's no longer liquidy, but has a nice jiggle to it. I'm putting that in a bowl of hot water and using a butter knife to separate the edge of the panna cotta from its ramekin. And then I'm gonna put my serving plate on top of that and flip it over with the ramekin so that the panna cotta can release. And once I do that, a little bit may have melted in that heating process to release it. So I'm just going to take my towel here to wipe any excess liquid off. And then I'm going to add a sprig of fresh thyme, or you can use a, a leaf of fresh basil, and it's ready to serve.